one day Kenny was looking through his closet Found a bunch of random games It's been a few years since he last played them Guess we'll find out what he'll say Still stick around, he'll show you what these games are about We'll have some good laughs and laugh at these games Yeah! Welcome to Really Forgotten Games Where I show you an obscure game that I found buried in my storage I'm Kenny and today we're looking at Pink Goes to Hollywood. The game was released in 1993 on Super Nintendo and Genesis consoles by the developers Tech Magic. These are the guys that brought you such classics like Andre Agassi Tennis, Champions of Europe, and ugh, Shadow of the Beast. They did attempt to jump to the N64 and PlayStation with one game, and I kid you not what it was. Tech Magic was trying to make a Steven Seagal game. Originally, it was for the Super Nintendo, titled The Final Option, but Tech Magic decided to announce it for N64 and PlayStation as Deadly Honor, both of which would have been great games. They never saw the light of day. Back to Pink. This Pimp and Panther has been around since 1963, featured in the credits of the Pink Panther. Since then, he has starred in 124 shorts, 10 television shows, and three primetime specials, along with his credit features in the movies, excluding A Shot in the Dark and Expector Cluzo. I always thought Pink and Chester Cheeto were a bit similar. They're cool and slick felines with an attitude. Turns out both characters were created by the one and only Holly Pratt, the great animator of Warner Brothers and Disney, who won an Oscar for Tweety Pie, featuring the introduction of Sylvester and Tweety. We learned something today! High five! Now with that history lesson out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. Pink Goes to Hollywood. No, it's been a very long time since I last played this, and I barely even remember it. So I guess there's really only one way to find out how to play it. On the Super Nintendo. But you know what's better than playing on Super Nintendo? Playing it on an autograph Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah! SCC, baby. The game starts out with Pink repainting the Hollywood sign. A comical midget director strongly dislikes this and chases him about the studio a lot. That's the story. Makes sense to me. As you begin to play this game, get ready to look mucho manly, because this is full of shades of pink. The intro screen just pops full of it, allowing you to either start or select options. The options aren't very deep, with just changes to how many lives you get, how you want the sound, and how many points you want until you get another life. You start the level with a pimp hat on, signifying your pimpness, but also signifies having two hits until death, sort of like um, when Mario gets a mushroom. Makes sense. The levels are creatively named in all things pink. Honey, I shrunk the pink. Pink and hood, again, prove my theory that pink is a pimp. Pink ranger. And refrigerator. Yeah. Refrigerator. Thinking out of the box there, guys. You can, of course, run and jump on enemies and use your pimp spray. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> this sort of thing ain't my bag, baby. Look at him bumping away. <laughs> so you use your pimp spray when in close quarters, which is handy, but sometimes a bit delayed. <sighs> Come on, stupid meatball. Now here's what really burned me up about the game. The continue screen. Shouldn't it just be simple and to the point? No, it has to complicate things and make you try to jump to it, which is impossible. Believe me, I exhausted every possible way to get up there. Look at I'm just jumping around trying to. There's nothing. Like, you can't even wall jump like in Ninja Gaiden or anything. It's just what? What just happened? You mean that's not background? You mean that stupid faded box that's been around can be used? Why is it so obsolete? Look at it. I mean, it's, I still think it's background. Turns out the coins you get are tokens to reveal new locations to you. That's a swell. Now, it doesn't look like it, but the controls are a bit slippery, especially when jumping. When you die, a fellow shows you the level again and the take you're on, which is a bit handy, but just comes off as mocking. Shut up, you eyeless jerk. I know that it looks like that I'm sucking at this game, but watch how well the computer does on the demo.
When the game can't play itself, you know that's a bad sign. If one thing's for sure, the enemies don't screw around at all. They want you dead. Friggin' hate seeking wishbone! I would show you more levels, but I honestly can't beat any of them. I get to the end, and either I'm killed at last second by some fluke, or I'm just stuck. I used to have the box for this, but, you know, these boxes, they don't last forever. I mean, it's probably disintegrated somewhere in the closet. In the end, it's not a bad game, but it's really nothing that special. It's just really another platformer with a novel character. I recommend giving it a shot, but don't go out of your way trying to look for it. it it's just one of those games. I'm Kenny, and thanks for watching Really Forgotten Games. See you next time.